Hey everyone, episode number two with Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. So one of the things that I've been proposing for a while now as we rolled into 2021 is uh, I believe inventory is going to start to rise, right? The move up buyers are going to start to move and you know, frustrated landlords are going to want to start to get out because they're just, they just keep getting beaten up. And I don't know what you're seeing in your areas or your students, but I, I've already had a couple of people reach out to me going, oh my God, you're right. We're, we're seeing, because I ask people have really small criteria and my students are going, wow, I, I'm seeing deals. I'm like, you're doing the work, right? It's happening. Last 2020 was odd. Even I did 250 offers, nothing. 2021 is not going to be that. There's going to be deal flow if you do the work. Do you agree? A hundred percent. And I've been telling my students, so I coach on the side and I've got um, several students who have been working really hard for six months to learn their markets, identify properties, underwrite deals. And just like you, you can underwrite 10 deals and one might look okay. And then that one is gone tomorrow and it's way overpriced. And then it, it even goes above that, you know, because there's so much pent up demand that people are paying crazy mm -hmm. amounts of money for these properties. And I've told everybody, you just have to be patient. You have to wait for the right timing. And when people say enough, then they'll start to sell. They'll start to panic. And yeah. one of the things that I've, I've been talking about for several months and we've talked about on this show is people are wanting to sell for two main reasons, the eviction moratoriums, tenants not paying rent, businesses being shut down, and just fear of the overall economy. And number two is the fear that Biden's tax plan gets implemented, really, because investors are saying, hey, if I was thinking about selling, if I have to pay a third of everything I sell as a long-term capital gain, that's really going to hit hard. But if I can try to sell it quickly before that tax code changes, while well, I can lock in that 10 or 15 or 20% long-term capital gain rate, then I might do okay. And so what I suspected would happen and what I'm starting to see is that landlords are starting to put their multifamily properties on sale. And I know you focus mostly on single family, so I'm not really real attuned to how many new single family properties are hitting the market, but on the small multi to the point that just this year, just this year in the last two weeks, I've had three uh, of my coaching students find a deal, decently priced, underwrite the deal, make an offer and get under contract on their first multifamily property. So that's super exciting. Um, but I'm seeing every day, we're seeing new listings of small multi-units, those, those landlords that are really kind of hit hard and they're pricing them right because they want to get out. They're hoping that they can get out before the tax code changes. Yeah, I think that's interesting. And, and that's probably where the opportunities are going to start is that small multis. And let's be clear, I'm thinking five to like 20 units. Yeah, even, even four. I really tell my tenant, my, my clients, try to focus on the four unit buildings. A duplex yeah. is like a single, they're not yeah. gonna cash flow as much. Yeah. A triplex, if that's what's available in your area, fine, but go for at least a four unit okay. up to okay. you know a 20 or 30 unit, depending for their first deal, depending on what they can take down. Yeah, and, and I think those are gonna be where opportunities come first because again, single families, right? You, have, you still have all these owner occupants that are moving and space and all of that. And actually, again, in my portfolio, most of my pain is in apartments, right? Small multis. And yeah, if that's your one multifamily that you've owned for years and it's, you know, depreciated to zero and, you know, you, your cost basis is nothing. Yeah. Listing it now makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, right. Cause you probably have one tenant not paying. And, you know, if you if you can save 15 points on it, on taxes, you know, you, you, you take the haircut now. I think that kind of exactly. makes sense. Yeah. And I'm, it's starting to play out. And again, you know, and, and these clients are in a different area too. So um, I'm starting to see it, not just here in Pennsylvania, but starting to see that trend where you're starting to really start to see, you know, more people try to sell. And I think that's going to continue. And with this new um, CARES Act, you know, round that we were just talking about in the last episode, seeing that the eviction moratorium is going another nine months um, is really going to make landlords that already are having pain that now we're looking at a tax change also, they're gonna yeah. be like, oh my gosh, this whole year 
could totally sink everything that we've done this for, sink our retirement, make us give it up in taxes. So if I can cut my losses now and just sell for what I can get, and, and by the way, I hope that I can sell before the tax code changes and hope that that doesn't get implemented until 2022, I think you're going to see a lot of landlords try to drop their properties this year. I could be wrong, but that's my prediction. No, I'm going to play with that a little bit. I think you're right. I think that's that's kind of when you put it, when you overlap or you do a Venn diagram, I think that's where the maximum pain is, right? Because the big boys, they probably have different lending, right? They, they may even, if they're big enough, they may even have federally backed loans, right? The small ones have, you know, community banks or regional banks. Uh, apartments are more pain than houses, less competition. I mean, yeah, less buy. I mean, that makes total sense to me. I think I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. And the other thing is, as I was talking, because I target off-market deals a lot, I try to target sellers that have properties that I'm kind of interested in buying. And I've had conversations with a couple that are like, we're just not ready yet. We want to see what happens with the administration change. And, you know, they, they have their tenants paying, but they're really concerned about the capital gains. So, you know, I was talking to them about, hey, if Biden gets in, here's what he wants to do. You could pay a lot more into taxes if you wait till next year. Are you sure you don't want to sell it now? And their you know, advisors are like, no, we don't want to sell. But they told me if Biden gets in, call me after the new year. And mm. so, and I have, and I'm just waiting for them to understand. I think with this hitting, and I think one, if you start to hear them talk about tax code changes, like we're going to work on tax code changes. I know that there are sellers that I have talked to that says, yeah. if that happens, yeah. we'll sell before we can beat the change. Yeah, I think so. So. Yeah, so I think that's a, that's very interesting. That's that's going to give me another area of, uh, to go focus on. Uh, any closing thoughts on this? Yeah, I just you know remember Warren Buffett says, "Be greedy when people are fearful, and fearful when people are greedy." And right now, over this next year, we still have some fear in the marketplace. We have fear and pain um, that landlords are are feeling, and that's going to create massive opportunities. So don't get caught up on the fear. When you hear all these things, don't be like, oh, this is, it's just too hard. It's not worth it. It's too risky right now. Mm -hmm. No, this is the time to take advantage of opportunity and figure out how to mitigate all that risk. If you buy a property and you do that by really good tenant screening, exactly. buying properties exactly. in very well located areas with a lot of different industry that aren't real heavy restaurant and retail and, and spa and entertainment right now because of the pandemic. And you make sure you have enough reserves to weather a really rough year or two. And remember, you're playing the long game. So even if you have a really bad year or two, if you're holding these properties for 20 years and you've got rent upside in the future, um, the pain now can be very worth the growth that you're going to experience by taking advantage of the opportunity, being you know greedy when everybody else is fearful. With that, we will end this episode. Thank you very much, Anna. You're welcome.